Hello boys and girls, my name is White Rhino PSO, and today I am playing more bus stories. Uh, I got my food and drink mostly full, and a full backpack. Still got 211 monies, uh, but I do have to swing by the bathroom before the bus leaves. Because, holy god, I was getting a little backed up there. Alright. So who's next on the agenda? the hell? Oh, it's a symbol for a tunnel, I guess. <clears throat> oh, now we've got palm trees. That guy has a very bright nose. Hey, how's the trip? You look hungry to me, man. You're always eating. You know, it's amazing how important food is in our life. As I read in one book about the conquest of America, your food is my food. It's a formula of friendship. What is it all about? I'm a restaurant critic. No, not like those people who download the apps for their mobile phones, put rating stars, and consider themselves incredibly important. That sounds a little more personal than just a normal person's remark. Actually, in our time, everyone can be a critic and seem incredibly important, take care of the mania, Mania Grandiosa. It is amazing. An incredible opportunity to express opinion is given to everyone. If it, f it at first messed up professional work and then destroyed the whole industry. I know a man who owns a company. A stuff of... 11 people. A farm of accounts in social networks that look like real people. They write reviews and comments for money as similar as possible to real users with grammatical errors, emotions, poor quality pictures. These are the comments that you would personally leave and then you would personally believe it. I was writing reviews for restaurants before the creation of mobile apps and opportunity for everyone to be a critic. I can say with confidence that an objective assessment is impossible, a matter of principle. A person is not a robot and there are no clear criteria. You can always get up on the wrong foot, be touched by a cute waitress, or tired of the same interior. Another question, is objectivity necessary? Those who read a lot of reviews start criticize, start criticize critics. Some feedback the reader will consider more useful and similar to theirs, and some won't be of any interest. Meanwhile, with experience, everything wears out. It is too much of something. Things cease to amaze in many respects because they do not aspire to do so. How can you write re unique reviews of the same places? Everywhere is the same menu with sushi, burgers, soups, and beer. Everywhere is the same background, either a music channel or a sport broadcast, and even often live music, but it's even worse, to be honest. In fact, you can change... I don't know if this is like a background or just like a neat picture. Yeah, I don't understand. Just weird pictures on your phone. Oh god. Yeah, so took a picture of a guy, and then another picture, another picture, and then he realized, so he gr he was angry with you. Weird pictures, man. Anyway. Uh, yep, I already read that one. Although it's a matter of taste again. I now didn't, do not like live music. The vocals are muffled by instruments and there is no coziness at all. I'm actually not a big fan of live music myself. I find the stuff that's actually on the radio to just be more enjoyable to listen to. Expensive restaurants, in fact, differ from network cafes only because a burger should be eaten in specifically served gloves and french fries with a fork. I was depressed, but you know what? Miracles happen. Recently I came across a place that surprised me. The restaurant belonged to some artist. She is famous in inner circles. It is a dark semi-basement where, by the way, phone is out of connection. The walls are decorated with paintings. Hall is drawn up as a gallery. It is absolutely beautiful. Do you remember what I said about objectivity and its impossibility? Interior is very important to me. You should have an opportunity to sit in the hall so, they, so the way it looks is important. The person whom you trust could always see exit, and you are not seen from the outside or at the entrance to the hall. I also hate halls with glass walls. You know, when you're sitting in an aquarium and people from the street see how you eat. 
and you see them. Almost all places are like that. Just imagine, take a step inside and you're like in a different world. Cozy, safe, and painted with rabbits on the walls. They also have good food. I never, I'm never too picky about food, although it may sound strange from a restaurant critic, but there you could eat a lot for a good price. I even thought that in comparison with other places where I used to be, this one is honest. Background music is also very good. It is pop, not corny, but one that was played 10 years ago. The one that you inevitably heard before and something you might like, but now it sounds nostalgic. Even the damn phone cannot distract you. Ah, I hope you will be lucky someday to find a place you like, or maybe have already found it. All right. I am going to uh, get a bit of food in me. Uh, there's another one of those. Ah, the tacos aren't so good, but they're cheap. So I will go a little crazy with their tacos. All right. Uh, another one of them. And I do like my pizza. Swing on by the toilet. Sploosh. And back on the road. That's weird, that car only decided to speed up when I was going. Wow, sorry man. Um, ow. Nope, I am not drunk. Huh? Ow. Maybe a little. If you continue to look at me like that, I will quickly sober up. Aw. Oh, I hate buses. It is my only option for not now. But God, how I hate them. I hate this ragged seat. I hate rush hours when people turn into a pushing mass, which is just dying for the opportunity to start a scandal with me. I remember a long time ago, and I got on a bus that drove fans from a football match. The bus was the quintessence of my hatred to this transport. However, the most disgusting thing was football fans. I hate football. A disgusting sport. I don't know why it is so popular these days. A lot of people say things are disgusting. Its glory is absolutely undeserved. For me, it's more interesting to watch flies than a football match. Oh, how interesting it is to look at a madman who is not touched, but he lies and writhes in misery. Oh, not American football, but like soccer football. Because one of the things that's kind of known is that a lot of people will take dives in uh, soccer football. I mean, at least that's how things are perceived. Great actors die in them, and about false popularity. Aye, it's just a waste of resources of human civilization. Even more, this is the main mis its main mistake. All problems of the human kind are connected to this disgusting phenomenon. Do you not think global warming appeared? It is all because of rap singers? What can be dumber than wearing these clothes that are three sizes bigger? A grimy cap. I also hate them, by the way. And the funniest thing about all this is the content. Just think about it. A rich singer who receives millions for one performance. He sings about how he was forced to do criminal stuff in the ghetto. Absurd. Just work for the target audience. Deception. Damned business creates a culture in order that be in order to be more successful and sell more. This is a new kind of advertising. Now they create consum consumer ideals. Convince me that I need this one. Hmm, yes. For example, the same damned cap. But there is no practical value in it. I buy it because it's fashionable. And this is a lie. Just like football. After all, most of the football fans are not interested in it. They are afraid to admit that. An imposed culture of consumption. This is the main reason for the existence of such useless and unnecessary phenomena. Do I really need a new phone when the previous model came out just a year ago? But this is now an old thing. Even if it still works well, it is horrifying that whole industries can be made for cultural reasons, and you can sell anything. It is necessary only to convince that it is fashionable or elite. They can even create traditions and parasit parasitize on them for decades. 
Do you know the story of diamonds on gold rings? Yes, it's a tradition to give rings with diamonds. It was also forced from outside. The advertising campaign Diamonds Forever said that only with the help of such a ring you can prove your love. One of the most successful deceptions in the world. Since then it has become a tradition, almost all over the world. The most terrible thing in, is that even now, the company that imposed this stereotype is alive and thriving. Yes, she not only created a niche, but was for a long time the only major supplier of these precious stones. Well, perhaps I'll walk a bit. I do not like how they look at me. I hate such moments. Okay. Jeez, though, all these uh, people are taking a lot of my time to the shop. All right, ooh, we've got fries. How's the pizza do? The pizza is actually pretty darn good. As is the burger, Jesus. Uh, that's potentially a bit much. Uh, I'll go for a chicken leg. Down to 171 though. And time for my usual toilet swing. And back on the road. I like this song. What else is there though? Hug? Ooh. Let's see how this one goes. Interesting background, some wiggly trees. Oh, this guy. I seem to remember seeing this guy in that uh, that playthrough as well. Oh, damn it. It's so hot. I've been on this bus for two days already. Jesus Christ, guy. According to the map, I still have five or six hours to go. To tell the truth, I'm not good at it, and I can be wrong. I just hate buses. And on those rare occasions when I am forced to go by bus, I pray that some loser does not sit next to me and does not begin talking about everything being bad for him. You don't say. My car is in the car service, so it's where I am. So I'm where I am. Funny story, I was going to work in the morning on the highway. Everything was as usual, but that day I got up late. In a hurry, I forgot to go to the toilet at home. I stopped the car, I went on doing my business. I returned, there was no car. I saw several cars and a crowd of people quite far away. When I came closer, I understood the reason. I forgot to use the handbrake and it rolled down the track. Thank God no one was hurt as the car moved to the side of the road and crashed into a tree. People got out of their cars and yelled, where is its owner? Where is this idiot? I also began to scream unhappily. Yes, where is this dumbass? Where is it? Let's wait, he will return. And I waited. People began to leave one by one. They told me that the owner was not gonna show up and we might go. Well, I answered like, no, I will wait until the end and you go. When everyone left, I got into the car and drove back home. I told my boss that I got a flu. And while my car is under repair, I have to ride a bus. People find it romantic riding a bus, but I do not see anything good, like, it's always hot, there's no air conditioning, and when you try to open a window, there must be some old asshole who will scream that it's too cold. It's always shaking, and country music is on very loud. It doesn't sound like country to me, me but maybe I have earbuds in. I'm gonna get a crazy I'm gonna get crazy and start singing myself. When you leave the bus, you're all sweaty and smelly and feel broken. How do you manage to sleep in it? This is horribly uncomfortable. And finally, my stop. Goodbye. I will no longer have to sit on these rags. Jesus. One more stop under the belt. Uh, I didn't actually lose that much food or drink out of that guy. Uh, I'm gonna keep the fries. Uh, and I will drink one of the pinks. And replace it with a white. Um, cupcakes suck. Ice cream was alright. I'm gonna get a steak. How much did I spend? Seven? Uh, hopefully that's enough to, uh, get me where I need to go. The one... What do I got left? 155? 
I think I get enough time for one more conversation in this video. You know, I've always been very fond of philosophy and weird unexpected meetings. What? I, I'm not small, just short, and I look young. So, what was I talking about? Ah, of course. Once I was choosing a new book for myself in a large bookstore. When I entered the philosophy section, there was no one there. This did not seem strange to me. Philosophy is not that popular. Very soon I was hooked by a book by Jim Dabrillard. He was a philosopher and was about to leave. Leave? But then a strange looking man, oh, she was about to leave. And then a strange looking man came to me. He was about 60 years old. He was wearing a white suit and had a silvery white beard. Not very long. Right after he appeared in the section, he approached me. Did not we have a chat, he asked. I've studied for two years at university and have spoken with a lot of interesting people. And still that man seemed unfamiliar to me. I thought we could have crossed before. Maybe, I said. Then the man waited to know whether I was fond of philosophy for a long time, what I specialized in, what kind of thesis my parents wrote, and so on. I was still in disarray, despite the fact that this man was very nice. Then he asked if I was going to continue working at the university. And I, a person quite confident in the impermanence of life, answered him, it is possible. The old man laughed and replied, oh, at your age, it's time to know such things. Here, for example, I am sure that tomorrow morning will come. I laughed because I thought that I thought he was right and I liked such a self-affirming attitude. I'm ready to argue. I bet a million, he said. A million human souls. Then he smiled and headed for the exit from the department. I grabbed the book and rushed after him immediately, but he was neither in the next department nor at all possible turns. I wonder who it could be. I'm thinking maybe death. Uh, or, I don't know. God, Satan. Did not seem like a very uh, okay individual, though. Uh, I don't need the fries. Uh, hopefully this... That was very close. Uh, pizza was pretty good, I think. Uh, I think this... Yeah, that soda was not very filling. Uh, I actually might have enough time for one more conversation, so I'm going to go for it. I'm going to change that music, though. Yeah, it's alright. Get another transition, though. Ah, this look, full of disgust. Everything is full of disgusting. I know it. I also used to look at beggars with contempt. By the way, my na. Ah, uh, however, it it does not matter what my name is. Oh, my nay. You won't remember me. I'll just be a homeless person you met on the bus. Yes, I look not very good. Life of a homeless person is a disappointment until you get used to it. And it was not always so. I once had a family. Beautiful wife. Two children. In general, everything you need for a happy life. But then problems had come for my family, and to somehow relieve the tension, I began to drink at the bar in the evenings. It was something between a bar and a casino. A pretty lucrative idea, actually. After a few glasses, I noticed a group of men stood at the table watching the game. They made big bets, and people quickly noticed it. When I approached, one man showed his cards. Everyone went all in, so the winner received a six-figure sum. He showed the cards and made it clear that all the chips on the table belonged to him. I remember his proud smirk. It was clear that he was enjoying it. And the devil knows what made me then go for it. Maybe it was alcohol, maybe desperation, but I decided to sit down at the table and wipe his nose. I was bad at poker, so at first the bets were small and I won. Every victory made me happier, and I quickly forgot about my dismissal. Seriously, I had only then realized why people like me gamble so much. But free cheese only in a mouse trap. Then everything went worse. The losses became more frequent, the bets increased, and the irritation was accumulating as simply as the euphoria. Then, apart from irritation, there was a growing desire to fight off 
and I kept increasing bets, using the last money I had with me. I lost and won this money back and forth, and excitement increasingly influenced me. As a result, I lost all the money, but went there the next day too. Then again and again. I did not even notice coming there every day. I was very keen on poker. I was on this needle of fortune, and it took everything from me. Firstly, I got into debt and my wife left me, took away the children and torn up all contracts with me. She understood the situation and tried to help at first, but I could not control myself. Her patience just burst in the end, and I only now understand that fault was only mine. There was a big crack in my life, but I continued to play. Every single day I spent there all the time and lost money, occasionally fighting off and leaving with some money. And no matter how much I adored this excitement, I played badly because I completely burned out for a couple months. I had to sell an apartment to somehow pay off my debts. I was banned from entering the lagoon. The lagoon? So for the next few months I was drinking non-stop at a simple bar nearby. Oh, he got kicked out of the bar he was in. No one would want to talk to me in the end, even my former colleagues. Friends and parents turned away. The rest of the money I simply spent on alcohol, being sorry for myself and blaming fate. I slept with homeless people, drank, begged, and again it would repeat in my life. But in the end, I decided to start a new life. After a long search, I found a job as a cashier in the city of Las Vegas. No, in the city of Vas Vegas, on the other side of the country. And here I am, I'm going to Vas Vegas for my last money. This bus is my last hope, and I am sure that it will change my life. My story should be a lesson for you. Oh, wait, is this new casino? Hey driver, stop here. Okay, thanks for listening to me. See ya. Oh, you poor bastard. Oh, hey, that's the end. Hey, and the credits. So I'm glad I uh, pushed a little longer on this video. Uh, Nikita Pashinsky. Nice. It's a pretty neat game, though uh, while preparing to play it, I did start a game, so I have a good spot to uh, sync up the video and audio, and it looked like every single one started with that same kid talking about his brother going to school, so I don't actually know if this is randomly generated or if it's just the same group of people every time. I kind of hope it's not the same people every time because I, w I love, uh, what do you call it? I love, um replayability in games like this but uh anyway yeah that is bus stories um if there is randomly generated content then i will probably come back to this at some point because it's kind of nice to have a couple of videos i can just narrate some interesting stories um i do enjoy playing games where i'm allowed to kind of read off interesting things though i don't know if anybody even enjoys listening to my voice like that but as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.